Greetings to you fans of old technology and new technology. You're watching the Databits channel and typically we look at old technology on this channel. And today we're gonna look at old technology that's perhaps transferred into new technology. So this is an old medium here known as film and there are two formats that were used predominantly for home movie taking back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even the early 80s until VCRs and camcorders came along. So eight millimeter, super eight millimeter film, you may have a pile of these sitting around. And the question is, how should I get these into a digital format? Well, a company has sent me this product right here for free. They aren't paying me to make this video, but they did send this to me for free. And this is a film scanner. This has the ability to translate this old tech here into something new that you could play on your computer or upload to YouTube or share with your family, watch on TV, etc. I'm gonna pop the lid open here. Got some uh, nice uh, packing here on the top. Oh look, we get a take up reel. How nice. So take up reel here. That is the regular eight millimeter size on the reel. And then we have some adapters here. This will adapt eight millimeter to super eight size reels. Take both of those out. And next apparently we have the unit itself. So let's pull that out. This is the unit itself, wrapped in plastic. Okay, and there's the front of the unit there. We got our switch here for Super 8 and Regular 8 film. There's the bottom, side, side, and here's the back. So we have a USB port a TV out, an SD card slot, and a DC 12 volt slot there. All right, I think there are some other goodies in here. We have our 12 volt power supply. And this is our manual here, which also contains an SD card. So you get the SD card, you get the SD card with the kit, is nice and then here's everything that's left we've got a cleaning brush which is squeegee air powered there we have a USB cable we have a video cable composite video cable and then we have a cleaning cloth as well as an SD card and it is a no-name brand SD card included with it. And a nice soft cloth. Excuse me while I blow my nose on that. And then uh, here is our owner's manual. So let's give this thing a whirl. We'll set it up with a movie and see how it does. I've got my mains plugged in here. So plugged into the outlet and then plug that into here. And then I'm going to insert my SD card here and push it in until it clicks. And then over on the side, there is an arm that I can pull up and I'm going to pull that up like that. Now looking back at the front of the machine, we're gonna start from top to bottom and check out the controls. First, you have your LCD screen here. You got a power button here. We have a menu or mode button here. We have left arrow, right arrow, and OK, start, stop. Down here is a slide switch that releases the gate for you to load your film. And then down here is our selector switch that selects between eight millimeter and super eight film. Before we scan our film, it would be a good idea to look at our options and get us set up correctly. You'll notice here our frame adjustments off. So let's just go through the menu and I'll show you all the cool options you have. So we have record, playback, rewind, exposure, sharpness, USB, frame adjustment, language, 
format the SD card, default settings, film type, which would be positive or a negative. Look at the firmware settings and we're back to the beginning again. What I want to do is go into frame adjustment. I'm going to hit OK on that menu item. It'll advance the film a couple of times just to make sure it's where it should be. You can see that that's off. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust these X, Y, and W settings. So to change which one you want to do, you hit OK. And to adjust it, you hit left and right. So let's see which one we're on now. X, okay, is left and right. Y, there we go. Now we're moving it. So let's move this uh, diver up a bit here. So his feet are at the bottom of the window. That looks good. We can see a little bit of sprocket hole here on the side. So let's go ahead and change our width. Now this is zooming out. You can see there. And that's probably a little bit too far. There we go. And we need to zoom in from here. So let's do our width. And I needed to hit the left arrow. So there we go. There's our diver about to dive into the water and we can scan him more properly. Now I've experimented with the exposure settings and I didn't really like the way it looked when I changed the exposure or the sharpness. I think it looks best at the zero or the mid setting for both of those. So we should be ready to go and ready to scan. Here we can see the film is being backlit from the bottom up and our camera is actually up here on the top of this ridge underneath where our menu items are. A couple of things to note with this particular model. There's a little tiny guide right here. There's one in the middle right here and there's one on the far edge right here. I'll put circles on them just to reiterate that fact. These particular items need to be above the film. So make sure your film is underneath these guys. Okay. Also, I noticed that when I was scanning, it seemed to work a little better if this film selector switch is pulled just slightly to the left, not completely to the right like that, but just a little bit over from there. It's interesting how the uh, machine kind of adjusts to that, but okay. So just a little bit over, I found that there were times where it was essentially slipping and not pulling the film through as it should, but moving that over just slightly fix that, okay? And now for the exciting part, scanning our film. Once we're back to this main menu here, where it just says exposure, eight millimeter, 43, we can go ahead and hit the button here and begin scanning. This is a very lengthy process. This will take a long time. I haven't timed it, but it does take a long time to scan every frame of your film one picture at a time and add it to an MP4 file onto the SD card. So just let her run, go make you some coffee, have dinner, take a trip to the store, get some errands run, come back and see where you're at. Once you've completed scanning your film, it's time to rewind the film from the take up reel back to its original reel. And here's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and hit this little slide button here and let's remove the film from the scanning area here. We're gonna unwind it from all of these. Ah! Gonna unwind it from all of these guys here. I've uh, put a little bit too much on my reel here. By the way, this does not scan sound for film. It only scans silently. Let's remove this reel from this side. 
and again remove the film from the scanning area like that close that back up then I'm going to put this reel over on the other side in order to do so I'm going to move my my little adapter here but I have another adapter I think is going to work better notice this adapter here has the little tooth on the outside this one does not so in my case I needed to use this one because some reels don't have teeth on one side they only have them on one side in order to keep you from flipping the film over we never did flip the film over to run the other side that's not a thing so we're going to go ahead and put this on here with the little groove right there snap that on case in point here you'll notice the difference on this reel this is a GAF reel notice the center here is solid when I flip it over it looks like that so let's go ahead and place this on this side and try to get it to where it's in the little catch there like that and then I'm going to put my supply reel now supply but it was a take up reel over on this side and then you'll notice here it says put your film underneath this guide here when you're rewinding okay and then we go into the menu and we're going to do rewind and hit OK. And we are now rewinding. Now let's watch the actual footage that we took while scanning the film. And at this point, you can decide whether or not you think this is of good quality or not. So this will conclude our overview of the Movie Maker Pro 8mm and Super 8mm film scanner. Now should you buy one of these? It's kind of up to a couple of things in my opinion. Uh, one, did you like the quality you just saw on that scan? Secondly, is it going to cost a million dollars to have all of your film reels sent to a company that does this sort of thing for you? And if it is, then this is going to be a cheaper option than doing that. Plus, you get to overview the whole process. You get to tweak it to your liking and so forth. Um, 
I think I would buy one of these if let's say we had a family reunion and people wanted to see the old films and see some relatives in the best quality possible. That would be kind of a fun thing to use it for. But uh, of course I didn't pay for this one. I was given it to <laughs> review. So it's hard for me to say whether or not I would buy one. I've never bought one of these before. And typically I have done my own conversions while filming off the wall. Do I think this is better? Absolutely. Uh, your results can really vary drastically by filming something off the wall. Frame rates are sometimes weird and you get flicker and so forth. Now, if you have sound to put in there, like your movie is a sound movie, not a whole lot of options there. Uh, you need to use a sound projector and project it off the wall or scan it on here and somehow place the sound into the digital video, splice them together. Uh, that could be a chore and a task. So uh, yeah, different when it becomes a sound movie, I would think, but all of that old silent stuff would do great on this particular item. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you to make a decision. If you want to see all the geeky specs of this machine, uh, check down in the description. I've pasted all those in there as well as a link to the item so you can go check it out. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share this video with a hundred of your friends today. You can follow me on my social medias. Those links are also in there at the description. There is also a link to my Patreon and I certainly appreciate my Patreon patrons who provide uh, support for a lot of the retro tech that you see here on the database channel. And we'll see you next time.